hi guys and welcome to today's review um you may know or you may notice that my voice sounds a little bit funny but i've actually got cold at the moment um so i apologize in advance if i sound terrible um but hopefully i can make it through this video because it's been a bit of a long time coming um so today's video is going to be about this lovely stunning beautiful book the book of practical witchcraft a compendium of spells rituals and occult knowledge by pamela ball so i actually read this book um a couple of weeks ago and i wrote the review a couple of weeks ago but i've just not been able to get around to reviewing it um if you follow me on instagram then you may know that i've recently got a new job um which is very exciting um it's actually working in a library which i'm super excited about and obviously if you are familiar with my channel and my instagram then you know that i am obsessed with books so i'm basically living the dream um so yeah i started that last week and actually i think being in a new environment with new people is sort of introduce some new germs and so that's why i've ended up with a cold but um i'm feeling fine i've done a couple of covid tests as well so um it's not covid it's just a bog standard cold um so yeah let's uh, let's talk about the book now so basically um this book was sent to me by let me see if i can pronounce the name properly because um it's been a while um arcturus i think they're called arcturus publishing so i was sent an advanced copy of this book um for review um it was gifted is a stunning beautiful cover as well now at the moment i'm not 100 percent sure when it's going to be released originally it was supposed to be the end of october but I think it's been pushed back a little bit and now some websites are saying that it's going to be January, so the beginning of next year. I was going to email the publisher and sort of try and get some clarification but I completely forgot and it's a bit late now because I'm doing the review. So um, if you follow me over on Instagram then I will keep you updated when I know um, a little bit more information about that. But like I said on most websites um, or booksellers it's available to pre-order um, and it's looking like it's going to be the beginning of next year for release. So let's start with a little bit about the author Pamela Ball. Pamela Ball may be a name in the occult and witchcraft community that you've come across before. Um, she's usually found in, like I said, the occult, the spirituality section um, of the bookstore. Although I couldn't actually find much information about her sort of on a personal level, which is fine. Um, I mean, a lot of authors and people like to keep all of that stuff to themselves. Um, so not much about her in terms of her life, but I did find that she has written a lot of books. Um, so some titles um, of books that she's written include Natural Magic, um, 10,000 Dreams Interpreted, which I think is one of her most popular ones, uh, The Book of Spells, um, and an array of other books on dreams as well. So if you are familiar with Pamela Ball, then do let me know uh, which other books of hers that you've got. So let's move on to a little bit about the book itself. So the book is part of a series actually, and it's called the Mystic Archive series. Um, so another book that is part of this, um, I was actually sent a copy of this one as well, which is this one, um, which is another beautiful stunning cover. So this series is obviously going to be beautiful hardback books. Um, so this one is called The Book of Divination, um, A Guide to Predicting the Future by Michael Johnston, or Johnstone, Johnstone, yeah. Um, so I was also sent a copy of this by the publisher, um, so I will be reviewing this one too. I was going to do a little bit of a joint review, um, but they are two very different books, different authors, etc. So I figured two different reviews would probably be better. I'm not sure if there are going to be any other books in this series at the moment, if it's just going to be these two. Um, I hope there are going to be more because look how beautiful oh that one's upside down look how beautiful these two books are together as well they're simply stunning and i think every sort of witch or occultist would love to have these um beautiful hardback books on their bookshelf um so let's put that one to one side for now and i'll just quickly talk about a little bit about um this one itself 
So the book of Practical Witchcraft is split into two sections. Um, so as well as including a little bit of an introduction, part one um, is about the tools of witchcraft. It goes through um, working with candles, crystals, herbs, incense, oils, deities and archangels. So all of the tools that you need in order to practice that practical side of witchcraft. And then part two of the book deals with the spells and it's organised into various categories. Um, I think the main thing to know about the book is that it does focus on the practical side of witchcraft, like I said, obviously with the title. Um, so it deals with the spells and the actual workings, the magical workings with the, the tools, etc. So if that's something that you're interested in, then this could be the book for you. So I'm going to move on then to share some of my thoughts about the book. Okay, so um, my eyes might look a little bit red. I've just had a little bit of a coughing fit. Um, and so now they're all runny and red. And so I apologise again. Uh, but I just really want to get through this review so that I can get it up for you guys. So before I start talking a little bit about the book itself, I I know I've already mentioned it, but I'm going to mention it again, the beautiful cover. Um, just a little bit of information then about the book and the cover. It's a hardback and it's got this beautiful sort of silver embossing and the silver gilded edges as well that are just so beautiful and shiny. I don't know if, you, if it catches the light, you can see them, but it is this uh, beautiful silver colour. Um, and I love all the symbolism um, on the cover in that sort of black and silver monochrome style. Um, it is sort of the perfect witchy book cover, isn't it really? Inside the book itself then, it offers an introduction which is a really good setup for the book and for the idea of magic in general. Um, though it's brief, it does look at uh, the Kabbalah, it looks at alchemy, um, folk magic um, and secret societies as well because they've all played a part in influencing witchcraft and the witchcraft that we know and practice today. So it does also show that witchcraft is an amalgamation of lots of multicultural aspects and I think that's really important to have an understanding of when you're going into the craft. When touching on witchcraft history, it also follows um, a similar pattern to other books on the topic. So looking at paganism, uh, the witch trials, including Salem, uh, then moving to the 20th century with Gardner and Wicca. Most of the history is discussed in a very brief sort of matter of fact way. Um, however, the information on Wicca is a lot more detailed. It does have the Wiccan read in full and the Wiccan principles as well, which are mostly an American thing, I think. Um, but I'm not sure why it's decided to focus so much on Wicca, um, just because the rest of the book isn't really Wicca focused, if that makes sense. It doesn't really specifically focus on any specific Wiccan traditions or Wiccan beliefs or the Wiccan principles. Um, so it is suitable for everyone, whether you're practicing Wicca or whether it's just a witchcraft path that you prefer to follow. In part one of the book, as well as covering the tools that most witches use in their craft, it also briefly looks at deities. Um, so it gives you an inf some information on a range of different deities uh, from different traditions and different pantheons. It's a good introduction for further study and it might help you um, if you're sort of a little bit unsure at the moment of whether you want to include deities in your path. Personally, I did appreciate the inclusion of deities in the book because even though they are maybe seen as a devotional part of the craft, uh, for some people, uh, they can also play a part in your spell work and a lot of people will use deities, call on deities um, within their sort of practical aspects of their craft as well. One thing that I didn't quite understand though was the inclusion of archangels. Um, this is not something that I've ever come across in a witchcraft book before. Um, for me, on a personal level, I don't really want to include anything sort of predominantly Catholic in my craft. It's not part of my background, it's not part of my heritage, I've never sort of been brought up that way and it's not something that I have any sort of connection with. Um, I know some witches out there that are um, Catholic as well and it is definitely 
uh, possible to incorporate um, a religion with your witchcraft practice um, but it just felt a little bit out of place in this book um, and honestly I did sort of just skip over that section. Another section which I did find to be a little bit too prescriptive was um, about altars. So it recommends um, having two candles to represent the god and the goddess, um, having an athame, things to represent the elements, etc. And these are all things that witches probably have in their craft um, and they might even have on their altar. But I don't believe that your altar has to be that prescriptive. If you don't want to include those things, then that is fine. Um, your altar is sort of a place where you have things that are meaningful to you. I've got a little bit of a glimpse in mind at the background. It's looking a bit of a mess at the moment. I really need to sort that out. Um, but yeah, um, you don't have to include any of those things in your craft if you don't particularly want to. I think the section that was my favourite in the book was about making your own incense. There are a lot of recipes to try and to use for lots of different purposes. Um, there are recipes for, I've written this down just because there were so many, there's recipes for banishing, protection, negative energy, malign energy, um, psychic protection, love, relationships, money, prosperity, success health, divination and prophetic dreams. Um, there's also ideas for incense that are attuned to days of the week, to the seasons, to the elements, the planets and even more than that. Um, so as someone who usually just uses a ready-made incense stick or an incense cone and just you know lights that, um, then it really did open my eyes to um, all of this untapped magic um, that does actually come from making your own incense blend. Um, so I really did like and appreciate that section because it was something new for me. Another thing that helped to advance my personal practice in the book was some new information about candle magic. Now you might be thinking, well candle magic isn't that sort of beginner stuff, isn't that basic stuff? Well yes it can be but actually this book introduced me to sort of some other aspects of candle magic that I'd been interested in but was sort of unable to find the information that I needed. Um, so. It had the usual stuff in there, sort of the in-depth information that most beginner books have when introducing candle magic. So things like choosing a candle colour that suits your intentions, but it does also cover um, dressing your candles, charging your candles, um, and explores correspondences. So the part that I've now added to my grimoire was something that I knew about but like I said it's not something that I've come across before um, in any of my other books or studies um, and that was interpreting the way that a candle burns um, and what it means if your ca you feel like your candle is burning um, sort of in a significant way. Again it was exciting to learn something new and to add that to my grimoire as well so it's something that I'm um, um, excited to try next time I do a little bit of candle magic. The second part of the book is dedicated to the actual spells so it starts by explaining the different types of spells that you may cast so bidding, uh, blessings, healings, um, invocations and incantations um, and then it talks about the kinds of magic that you may use in order to cast those spells. So for example, colour, herbal, candle, crystal, knot, representational magic, symbolic magic, um, talismans, amulets and charms. So it's interesting that it actually makes that distinction between the type of spells that you will cast and the magic that you will use to cast those spells. Um, I don't know many practitioners that do um, sort of make that distinction between spells and magic um, and so it was really interesting and it was very comprehensive in the explanations of each aspect. The spells themselves then that are included in the book are organised in two sections. You've got spells that are related to friendship, love and relationships, health, healing and well-being, money, luck and career, home and personal protection and the evil eye. Each section is full of spells for all sorts of different situations. For example, in the friendship section, it covers all aspects 
um, from things like making new friends um, to severing toxic friendships um, and everything in between that you could possibly need. So you're bound to find something that suits your needs. Um, and if not, then there will be one that you can adapt for your specific purpose. There are so many spells in there. There's actually an index in the back of the book, um, which just makes it so much easier to find what you're looking for. There's not much else to say about this particular section of the book. Um, it's just really comprehensive and the spells themselves are really well organised. So for each one, it will give you the spell itself and a little bit of information about it, the ingredients and the equipment that you will need, um, the method for casting the spell, and for some of them, there's a little rhyme or a verbal spell that you can say to go along with it. Okay, so now I'm just going to move on to a few sort of little things that I wanted to mention and bring up in terms of problems or issues I found with the book. Um, as I say, I always like to present a balanced review um, and there were a few flaws, shall we say, that I did find with the book. Firstly, it refers to white magic and black magic, which is quite an outdated view um, of magic. It does attribute black magic to African cultures, which was more than a little bit disappointing to see. Um, and the information about um, African witchcraft or magical practices seemed to be provided more to shock. So everything was prefaced with um, are said to and it is believed um, rather than sort of being grounded in any fact. So it was more to sensationalise, I think, this sort of aspect of the craft um, rather than presenting those facts about magic and beliefs um, in African cultures. If you are interested in learning more about African witchcraft or magical practices, then I would definitely recommend um, a book that has been thoroughly researched um, on that topic, a book that's been authored by someone who is um, from that culture, who has practiced those traditions. Um, and it's also important to note that Africa is a huge continent with so many different varied traditions, cultures, beliefs, um, and that really just didn't come across well in this book. The next thing is a little bit of a warning. Um, there is a section on crystals and it does mention some cleansing methods for your crystals. Um, for instance, putting them in water, whether it be sea water or salt water. Um, however, it doesn't mention that some crystals or stones that actually submerging them in water or putting them in water is not a good idea because it can damage them. It is always a good idea to research um, which crystals are okay to submerge in water. Similarly, the book does feature a healing spell that involves leaving a crystal in water for 24 hours and then drinking the water. However, again, it doesn't mention that some crystals can contain harmful compounds that can contaminate the water and therefore they would be harmful to drink. Um, it may have been better if they had included a list of water safe crystals um, or an alternative just in general is to put the crystals in something in a container before you then place that in the water um, so that the crystals don't actually come into contact with the water itself. But don't worry, it still has that sort of same energetic energetic effect um, that the spell requires. So those are just some things to bear in mind if you're new to witchcraft and you're not familiar with that sort of aspect of crystals, um, that that maybe section should have come with a little bit of a warning. Something else I did find a little bit strange is a repetition of a section. So the information about the elements is repeated. It appears in part one and part two of the book. Um, I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. 
I know that some people do tend to sort of flip around to different sections of books rather than reading it from cover to cover like I did. I suppose that the inf that information on elements is relevant to both sections that it is in. I just found it strange that it was repeated sort of word for word. I'm not sure why they chose to do that. Maybe it's just me that finds that strange. I don't know. Okay then guys, time for some final thoughts on this book. Um, so overall, I think it would make a really good study book. Um, so it's sort of like includes the theory behind the practical side of witchcraft. Um, but hopefully you will feel inspired to try and to use um, a lot of the spells within it as part of your craft. So like I said at the beginning, the book focuses on the practical side of witchcraft, the casting of the spells, um, rather than the more devotional side, I suppose, um, like things like honouring the wheel of the year, um, appreciating nature and the world we live in, uh, working with the lunar phases and journaling. So if that's what you're looking for, then this is probably not the book for you. This is, like I said, more practical. I think that the book is good for beginners it deals with a lot of the basics sort of to get you started in spell work um but even as a more seasoned witch i did still find it useful there were a lot of spells um in the book that i will definitely refer to for various purposes that come up um, and even if the spell is not sort of the exact thing i'm looking for i know that it will provide um a good starting point um, for me to work from and to adapt for my needs. I did mention a few things um, that I feel could have been improved about the book. So um, a few outdated perspectives, um, some missing warnings um, when working with crystals. Saying that though, I did um, learn a lot of new bits and pieces, which is always nice. Um, it introduced me to some ideas that I've not previously come across in my reading or my studies before. Uh, such as the interpretation of candle flames and making incense. It's also worth noting as well that there is a little bit more to casting spells um, than having the ingredients and performing the spells as it is written. Most witches, myself included, will have some pre-rituals. So making sure that you've cleansed your space, um, you may want to cast a protective circle, centering and grounding yourself, um, and just making sure that you're in the right frame of mind before you start um, casting your spell. However, these are something that are not covered um, in this book. So it's great for the spells themselves, but if you are new to witchcraft, um, then you may want to carry out some further research into cleansing, into grounding and meditating, etc. Um, just as a starting point before just jumping straight into um, casting the spell. Um, so actually carrying out these pre-spell steps, just make sure that you have a clear and positive mindset um, and in my experience, I found that it means your spells are more likely to succeed um, and be successful if you're in the right frame of mind and you've performed these sort of pre-rituals. I think that this is probably one of those books that a lot of witches would just love to have on their bookshelf just because it's so beautiful on an aesthetic level, um, but it does also deliver with the spell work. Um, and I know that I'm probably going to keep dipping into it every now and again. So let me know what you think, guys. Um, would you love to have this book on your witchy bookshelf? Like I said, it's not out just yet. Um, it is available to pre-order from a bookseller of your choice. I apologise that I'm not 100% sure as to when it's coming out. Like I said at the beginning, um, it was due to come out at the end of October, but it has been pushed and it's looking like it's going to be the beginning of next year. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, then I will post any updates um, as and when I get them sort of about the book on there. Okay, thank you so much for watching today's review, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful and it wasn't too painful to sit here and listen to me with my sort of sore throat and my cold. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.